Good morning. Welcome you to worship. Um, today is a very, very special day in the calendar, the Christian calendar, in that it's a day when we've come to commemorate, to give thanks, and to remember the day when Jesus openly acknowledged his kingship as he entered into Jerusalem. We want to thank God for all his goodness and his grace, and we want to celebrate because God is an amazing God and we want to just walk with him in confidence and in faith. So wherever you, wherever you are joining us from this morning, I want to encourage you to get ready to celebrate and to give thanks to God for his goodness, to know that God is with us, that God is near, but above all, that God by his spirit has come into our lives to do us good. Let me read some verses to you from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. So enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues throughout all generations. And because of that, everyone ought to know who Jesus is. And as we begin our rather continue our worship this morning, I want to lead you in this song, Everyone Ought to Know Who Jesus Is. And if you don't know who Jesus is, I pray that by the end of this service, you will truly know who Jesus is. Everyone ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Let's stand. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, who Jesus is. He's the lily of the valley, he's the bright and morning star. People don't know, everybody ought to know, some people don't know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. I know. Bless the Lord, please be seated. But the truth is, you know, there are so many people who don't know who Jesus is. I want to say to you this morning, to know him is to love him. Because he is life itself. Life itself. So let's come to our Father and thank him for making himself known to us through his Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father, we celebrate this day as we commemorate the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem openly and boldly 
acknowledging the acclaim of the people who recognize him as the king of peace. We thank you that you sent him into the world, not just for a single group of people, but for all mankind. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came and you lived and you showed us how we ought to live with God and with each other. We thank you that you are indeed the peacemaker. And we come this morning and we openly confess our own failures and shortcomings. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness and your cleansing. When we fail to be peacemakers, to stand in the gap, to allow your grace and your mercy to flow through us, Lord, forgive us, we pray. We come not, Lord, proclaiming our goodness, but proclaiming our need of your grace, your cleansing, and your renewal, but recognizing that we are your children and that you have chosen to work in and through your church. So we bless your name and we celebrate, Lord, that you're a faithful God, that from the moment you created the world, you've never left us alone, but you have been with us. Even through our waywardness, you have still been there. Oh, gracious Father, we just, words cannot express our gratitude and our thanks for what you have done and continue to do in and through your people. And so this morning, Father, we pray for the body, your body, for every part. Lord, I just ask that today, that by your Holy Spirit, just as only you are able, that you will just, Lord, fire us. Fire us afresh to recognize, Lord, that you are working out your purposes in us. Help us to know that we are truly yours and that we are defined not by our circumstances or what others may say, but we are defined by what you have said, that we are children of the Most High God, part of the royal household in whom the presence of God dwells by his Holy Spirit, who have been called to follow him and to share the goodness of God, to bear fruits that others might taste and see that you are indeed a good God. Lord, we glorify your name. And Lord, we are as if we were transported to that day when the celebration rose up. But Lord, we know there's a greater celebration ahead of us. And even today, we give you thanks and say, let the angels in heaven rejoice. Because men and women across the globe are acknowledging your goodness. Those who are already in your presence are praising you. And we ask, Lord, that you would do something amazing among us this morning. Those who have come with needs of whatever the needs are, Father. Wherever healing is necessary and needed, we pray that you would pour out your spirit. Walk with us, talk with us, Lord. Affirm us in our faith so we may know that we are journeying with you. Where there are questions in our minds, Lord, bring clarity and speak clearly to us. Lord, hear our prayer as we pray. And draw us closer to you as we celebrate together. For we ask all these things for your glory and your kingdom's sake. Amen. Amen. Let's share together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And help us not to fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You know, sisters, brothers, friends, wherever you are, don't ever fail to allow the Lord to excite you, to let his spirit fill you with that sense of his presence and the possibility, the endless possibility of what God can do and wanting to do in your life. So those of you who are at home, we welcome you wherever you are joining with us from. Maybe you are not here because you've forgotten to turn your clock forward, and so you're still in your beds. Now, if you're in your beds with your cup of tea, I'm, I'm going to still um, say good morning and bless you, because the Lord is good. And the important thing is that he feeds us with his living word. But I want to encourage you, the following Sunday, which is Easter Sunday, I want to see you here in the sanctuary. So we can, together, it's good to see so many of you here this morning, but much more could be here this morning. Make an effort, brothers and sisters, to be here in the sanctuary next Sunday morning. This is an amazing week, as our secretary will inform you, as of tonight, from 7 o'clock through to Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, we will be having 
meetings of reflection and prayer to look at the journey of Christ um, from entering Jerusalem and the various things up to the time of his crucifixion. And so I'm encouraging you, this afternoon I'll be sending out the links um, for you to join us on Zoom. So be ready this evening at 7 to join us so we can together explore and to receive the blessings that come from God. And so let's continue to worship God as our Sister Ruth comes and leads us in a welcome song. And if you're by yourself, know that you're not, that God is with you. And just thank him for the life you have and that you have the opportunity to share in this service this morning. Ruth. Good morning, church. As we give praise to God, let's soon come on and celebrate. Come on and celebrate this gift of love we will celebrate. The Son of God who loves us and gave us life. He'll shout your praise, O King. You give us joy nothing else can bring. We'll give to you our offering in celebration praise. Celebration As he approached uh, Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which no man has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the coat, its owners asked them, why are you untying the coat? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the coat, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, to spread their clothes on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down to, up, down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. 
some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As they approached Jerusalem, and so as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and then and, and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God, God's coming to you. Here the, the you. end of the reading. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, church. A wonderful good morning to you all as we Commence. The Bible tells us this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And as, as we've heard the reading that Christ entered into Jerusalem on this day, that is what that, that is about. That, that's the day the Lord had commanded, and Christ came up as was uh, prophesied. So I want to say a really Great good morning to you guys who is in the building and whoever is watching, we want to say good morning to you and welcome to our worship service. It's a, as Pastor has alluded to, it's the beginning of a holy week and in, in the, in the um, church, Christian calendar and we'll be spending a, quite a few, time, a few days this week going through the journey that Christ went through. So where were you joining us from? Great, uh, we greet you with many, many, many blessings. If it's your first time visiting, have we got any first timers in the house? No? Welcome anyway. A blessed welcome to you this day. Um, this week, as I said, as we celebrate the Holy Week, we'll be um, doing different studies during, during this week, and I will give you uh, an idea of what the studies will be. Housekeeping. Just to remind you of the one-way system that's, um, it, that is in place, and also social distancing. Mobile phones, if you've got them with you, can I please ask if you put them on silence so we can not have any disturbance during the service. Toilets are out the door on my right, ladies, gents, and um, dis disabled facilities. We don't expect to have a fire, uh, any fire alarm going off, but if it does, there will be um, people to take you through the safest way. So we want to welcome Pastor Gordon again this morning. Our musicians and uh, Ruth, thank you for your worship leading. And thank you, sister, for reading that, uh, those words. Weekly activities, as was mentioned earlier, we will be going through from this evening a time of fellowship, studying, and um, leading up to Sunday this evening. It's pastor will be leading, and we're looking at the house of prayer, and that's taken from Matthew chapter 21, verse 17 through, to, Matthew chapter 21 from verse 12 through to 17. That's this evening. On Monday, our brother Michael will be taking the study, and it's uh, looking at victory, and it's coming from Matthew chapter 21, verses 18 through to 22. On Tuesday evening, it will be myself, and we'll be looking at Luke chapter 20, from verse 1 through to 19. On Wednesday evening, our sister Pearlene will be do looking at anointed at Bethlehem, and that will be taken from Matthew chapter 26, from verse 6 through to 16. And on Thursday, our sister Winston will be looking at Passover. We'll also be taking um, our Holy Communion, so be ready with your communion um, emblems to do the communion on Thursday evening. We'll be looking at Passover, and that will be taken from Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 through to 30. 
If you want these again, see me after church, or pastor will also be sending out links. But for those who are, who, who hasn't passed, hasn't got the number, those are the readings we'll be looking at. Um, yeah? So on Tuesday, 30th at 10.15, our brother Michael and his family will be put into rest, their dear brother, Lyndon Hendrickson. So that's at 10.15 on Tuesday morning. On Friday at 10.30, we'll be celebrating the crucifixion, and that will be held here at City Road. It will be a joint service at 10.30, so a joint service with um, our brothers of the road, St. Germain's. Um, and on Saturday, our prayer meeting will be cancelled, but there's a wedding of Carlene and Clovis. This wedding should have taken place yesterday, but for some reason it was cancelled. So that will be at 1 p.m. on Saturday. Then we're back here on Sunday morning for that glorious celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And by God's grace, I pray that you'll be here to share with us um, at 10.30 for prayer and at 11 for worship service. Um, and just encourage you to continue to pray to pray, to pray for our world, pray for our pastor. He has a tough week this week, so pray for God's hand on him to keep him safe and pray for his family, pray for the church family. Just keep praying in everything we do. We just want to cover whatever we do in prayer. Dates for your diary on Monday the 5th, it's our fasting day of fasting. I know it's bank holiday, but we, God's work still needs to be done. So we'll be doing our fasting on Monday the 5th from 11 till 3 p.m. And just to remind you that the offering boxes outside and there'll be a deacon there to receive the gifts as you go through so our thoughts for the for this week where it's taken from matthew chapter 21 and verse 5 it says and it's part of the entry the triumphal entry see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey on a colt a foal of a donkey so may you may our god of grace and peace be with you this day and throughout the rest of the week. Walk in God's favor. Thank you very much for listening. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Lesbury. Can I also add to your dates for your diary? On Sunday, the 11th of April, we will be celebrating the church anniversary, our 98th year in this location. If you were a member at the start of the church, please get in touch. Um, but if you weren't and you have been subsequent members, do share your memories with us. But someone was here when it started and he's still here. I wonder who that is. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's a faithful God, never changes, remain constant and relevant. And so this morning we want to thank God for all his goodness and his grace. Let's draw near to him in prayer. Father God, it is to you we give all the glory. There is no one else like you. And as we come this morning with thankful hearts, this past week has been a challenging week for so many, but you have been with us step by step by step. You have helped us in our disappointments and in our excitement. You have walked with us and we say thank you, Father, for your presence. We come to bring our offerings to you, our offerings of praise, of gratitude, and our monetary gift to say, Lord, receive some of what you have blessed us with. We pray you will continue, Lord, to grant wisdom to those who are administering these gifts. And we pray that above all, Lord, you will extend your kingdom. For we ask these things for your glory and your kingdom's sake. Amen. This morning we have an opportunity, if you've come with a word of testimony you want to share with us, then I would ask you, if you would like to do so, to go to the microphone to my right, if you'd like to share a word of testimony with the gathered community or those who are, and with those who are watching us online. Anyone have come with a testimony you want to say thank you to God for? Michael is coming as, she, as he comes. I wonder whether there are any others who want to bring a word of testimony. Just think about the goodness of God. A hymn writer says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, he says, 
my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving grace. Michael. It's very good morning to you. It's my, sorry. It falls to me to say that I didn't put my clock forward. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm one of those people. Um, it's Lyndon's funeral on Tuesday, which was mentioned. And unfortunately, it's, it's, it's the number 30. Uh, my family has got uh, 21. Right, and Linda's wife have got nine. But the, the service will be broadcast on the, uh, um, the church's website. Thanks again for all your cards and gifts and support and strength. I'm hoping that, uh, that it will be a sort of glorious going home celebration. And if I blub a bit, please put your hand and say, never mind, Michael, you can blub. <laughs> okay. But thanks again. Yeah. As we come, Lord, to give you praise, sing praise and worship to you, Lord, we come before you to glorify today because you've woken us up this morning and you've blessed us to bring us in the house of the Lord to come and worship together and glorify your name. We're going to sing joyous songs now. So we want some movement here in the church because we have so much to praise God for. Your 
upon his teachings and allow that to fill you with a real sense of his love for you. Franklin is going to lead us in a time of intercessory prayer. Good morning, people. Let's give God the glory and the praise. Amen. 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 Right. Father God, we bring our praise to you. Lord, we bring our problems to you, but Lord, we know that we can rest them all at your feet. Lord, we bring, we are in a world that is still under darkness, but Lord, we know that you are the shining light. Lord, we bring, especially I bring the country of Mayamaya to you, which is at this present time under such oppression from their government. But Lord, we know that, we, Lord, we know that you will be there helping those people to get through the situation that they are going through. Lord, I also bring our young people to you. Lord, we pray that you will guide them from all temptations that is surrounding them. So, Lord, we bring them to you. I also bring unto you many people who have been through problems, 
through this year and still uh, still going through them and some are still grieving through their loved ones. But Lord, we know that you are a co- you will have a common influence on them. So Lord, we bring to, bring to you. I also bring one of, I also bring a colleague who is in the sanctuary who has been through such a time. But Lord, because his faith is in you, that he, that he has got through whatever situation he may go through. We also bring Pastor Gordon and his family. We have just heard who may be going through certain things, but Lord, no matter what the situation is, he will be there with him because, Lord, you are, you are our anchor and our belief and trust in you. So, Lord, I bring Pastor Gordon and his family to you. And not just Pastor Gordon, but many families who are up and down, who are, who are going through the same situation and have nowhere to turn. But, Lord, we know that we can turn to you because, Lord, you are a God who will be there and he's a compassionate God who will be there through us. And, Lord, I also bring many of our governments at this time who are still fighting over this vaccine. Lord, we pray that this vaccine is not just for one set of people, not, for, not just for one set of country, not for one set of country, but for all countries of the world, whether they are rich or poor, because, Lord, you have provided it for us. So, Lord, we bring these things to you. And, Lord, in my closing prayer, let there be peace in this world and to many of the families. Amen. Okay. Sing every praise is to our God. Through the good times and the bad times, remember God is here with us. God loves us. He is our tower and our strength to get Amen. through every situation in our lives.
please be seated. I wonder how you would feel if you were in that crowd. Uh, maybe you were making your way up to Jerusalem for the celebration of Passover and you heard this commotion and you see all these people cheering and you see this man riding on a donkey and they're proclaiming he is the king of peace. I wonder how you would feel. I wonder how you would feel. I wonder what your emotions would be and what your response. Would you be standing aside or would you be joining in? Would you be critical or would you be supportive? I wonder how you would feel. But I'm excited for a variety of reasons. Because you see, on that particular day, that was the start when Jesus made a public declaration of who he was and he openly accepted the acclamation of the people who laid their garments, laid palm branches and said, wow, here comes the king as he made his way up to Jerusalem. Those of you who have been fortunate to have gone to um, Jerusalem, you know um, the path as you go the M Mount of Olives, as you come down into the valley, and then you go up into Jerusalem. And you can picture that as you come down, and you can look over into Jerusalem. And you can just, in a sense, transport yourself back to that time when this was happening, and all the excitement that was going on there at that time. So this is a very special time of year for Christians and for Jews. Right at the moment, the Jews are celebrating Passover. Passover began yesterday and will culminate next Sunday. And all through this week, there will be a variety of, of you know, celebration. We call this week Holy Week. Why? Because of, as we look back, what happened and how we relate to those things that happened. You see, Passover is important. It's very important for the Jews. It's a festival one of the most important festivals actually in the Jewish calendar. calendar. It commemorates the liberation of the children of Israel from Egypt. You remember how they went into Egypt and they grew so much that the Egyptians, they pressurized them and they treat them so badly. And they cried out to God for deliverance. And every time God, you know, speak to Pharaoh through Moses and, Fa and Pharaoh agreed that he would release them, he changed his mind. He changed his mind and he changed his mind. And finally, God said to Moses to tell the children of Israel, tonight when you go into your house, you need to kill a lamb, place the blood across the lintel post, and stay inside. And you must cook it and eat it quickly and have some bread without any yeast in it and stay within your house. Because tonight is going to be the night when the angel of God is going to pass over and every firstborn would die outside a house that had the blood and the lintel post. I wonder if you were there, would you laugh at the people? Say, ah, I'm okay, don't worry about me. Or would you have taken heed? It did happen. And the following morning, there was mourning and weeping all over Egypt. No one was spared from the king household right down to the peasant. The firstborn was taken. And the Pharaoh decided, man, you folks, get out of my place. I have had enough of you, get out. And even after they had gone a while, he was changing his mind and he sent his people after them. But God secured their, you know, their salvation as he brought them out. And those who came after them were destroyed. And so there is a joyous period of thanksgiving, of sharing and celebration among the Jew for what God had done for their forefathers. And they hold to that, that God is a gracious and a merciful God. But why do we celebrate or commemorate Easter? For Christian, this is, in fact, the start of a week that begins with, as I said earlier, Jesus' open declaration. His open declaration. He did not in any way, you know, prevent his disciples from acknowledging, acknowledging him for who he was. He sent them, in fact, to go and find the donkey in which to ride, as the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 53 prophesied. Behold your king coming to you, riding in a donkey. And he rode in. And he 
entered into Jerusalem. So this week is a week that began with the entrance into Jerusalem. Remember, Jesus was always going to Jerusalem and coming out of Jerusalem, going to Jerusalem and coming out of Jerusalem. So what was so different? He entered in purposefully in the week of Passover because there is a connection. He entered in boldly. And as he went in, you know, his disciples, you know, they were, they were actually getting so excited that the Pharisees were getting a little bit, you know, annoyed with Jesus and said, now, you need to keep your disciples quiet. But what did Jesus say? He says, well, if they keep quiet, even the stones here will begin to rejoice. You know why? Because they recognize what's going on here. I cannot keep them quiet. If I seek to do so, even the stones will rise up and give thanks for what God has done. John, in, one, in John 1, 28 and 29, he says, as he was baptizing and preaching, and he saw Jesus come, he says, Look, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Those words didn't fall in stones because the people understood what that meant. The lamb was the preferred sacrificial animal to offer for sins. And every day, lambs were being killed and offered as sacrifice in the temple. And so when, you, when John said, look, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, they understood. They were very aware of the prophecy of Isaiah. You know, that God's Messiah, the Son of God, was led to the slaughter like a lamb to pay the penalty of sin. So they understood what John said, and they knew that this was something new that was happening in their midst. So this morning, as we think around the whole idea of Palm Sunday, when they laid the branches and Jesus rode upon them and entered into Jerusalem, I want us to think about what this means, not only for us, but for the whole world. You see, the Passover... And the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ are two points in history when God's intervention to bring salvation for his people must be noted and understood. Let's consider the situation of the Passover. They were in dire strait. The Egyptians were expecting them to do more work and were not supplying them with the material. They treated them so badly and they were so oppressed and they wanted to get out of Egypt. They were in that localized situation, very oppressed, and they cried out to God, and God heard their prayer. But time and time after time, it wasn't God's intention to punish the Egyptians by taking their firstborn. It started out, you know, on a low key. So now, look, realize that God is the God of these people, the Almighty God. I'm gonna show you a sign. He sent different things. Release my people. Release my people. So it was at that time for a specific situation. They were oppressed. And God did something to release them. Now as we move on to Calvary, or rather to the birth of Jesus, the life of Jesus, and the coming of Christ, and at the start of this week we commemorate, he was saying now, here I am, the Lamb of God. The true Lamb of God has come to take away the sins of the world. So through the week, through to Calvary, to burial and resurrection, a new order was instigated. Not just for a particular group of people, but for the whole world. Every human person has to come through this new and living way that has been opened by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we remember God's faithfulness, and that should enable us to say, my God is able and he's faithful, and when I call to him, he will hear my prayer. But we need to embrace the new way that God has made, and that it isn't about where you were born, it's not about your ethnicity, it's not about any of those things, but it's about your recognition of the one that God has sent to bring salvation to all of humanity. So our remembering this period, and we, we, we call it Holy Week because of all that happened, as we go through this time, remember what God has done for you. What God continues to do for you. Why? Because he loves you with an everlasting love. 
And so Christ came and he died. He paid the penalty for the separation of humanity from their God. And he created a path back to God that we must embark upon so we may enter into that relationship where we can find our true self and the purpose for which we were born. But how often we get lost in all of the celebration or the problems. I want to ask you this morning, are you feeling somewhat lost in your problems? Are lost in your jubilation because something amazing has happened to you? You have retired and you have loads of money and you have good health and you're ready to embark upon that life you had not had. Your family are well, all is good. Or maybe the reverse. Have you got lost in the malaise of what the world has to offer? All those people who came to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover, they were there busying themselves, doing so many things. There's a lot, it was festivity going on. And they were thinking, oh no, not this Jesus again. So many times we've heard that he's come, but finally we've seen him. He has come back here into Jerusalem. What does this mean? But as Jesus approached Jerusalem, verse 38 of our reading, verse 38 of our reading said, as he approached Jerusalem, he said, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And verse 39 onwards, Can we go down a bit further, please, Maxine? Verse 40. He said, as he approached Jerusalem and he saw the city, he wept over it. There aren't many occasions where it has been noted that Jesus actually cried. Remember when he saw the sorrow of Mary and Martha and all those who would come, that he wept because he saw how moved and how the dereliction that had swept over the two sisters and the community because their brother had been taken. And in the midst of all this jubilation, Jesus didn't lose sight of why he came. And as he looked over into Jerusalem, he said, he wept. He wept over it. Have you ever cried over your children? your parents, your community, your world. You know, when you look around our world and you see the devastation and the poverty, do, do you just turn away or do you, do you just wonder, I wish there could be a difference? And here is where I want to explore with you this morning about, you know, Jesus, in all his, his, his glory that he had come with, he had come for that purpose. But the, when he looked and he saw the possibility, the endless possibility that existed, but down through his ministry, three years he had been ministering, and not many had come to believe in God, in God's grace, in God's mercy. And he said, if you, if you, if you, even you, I'd only known on this day what would bring you peace. If you, only you, would know on this day what would bring you peace. My brothers, my sisters, where are you looking for meaning and peace and purpose? Are you finding it? Or are you wearing this mask of being successful or being sophisticated and just saying, I have got it? When in your heart, in your life, you're dying and crying out. If you, even you, even you, would know on this day what would bring you peace. Now, remember Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. People are looking for meaning and purpose all over the world. 
They want to experience life in its fullness and they are prepared to spend. If someone is unwell and they have money, they'll spend all their money to get health. If you had known today what would bring you peace, let me ask you what would bring you peace. What is peace? The ability to be in a place that even though around you things are not as good as they could be, there is a, a quietness of spirit that is able to deal with those issues. What has troubled you this past week? And those of you who are at home who didn't come, not because you are unsure about the virus, but maybe because you are overwhelmed with difficulties, what it is that prevented you from arising from your place and coming into the house of God to worship? What is it that is preventing you from praying? Some of you may have not prayed for many days or weeks. It is because things are not going your way. Did God tell you everything was going to go your way? No. But he tells you he would be with you and he would help you. And if you call upon him, he will hear you and answer you. Now, it isn't God that is causing trouble to come your way. It is the enemy. But God is with you in the situation. And you need to know that, that God is with you and he has good plans for you. But you have to get close to him, get into the word so you understand the word. Learn how to use the sword of the spirit to combat the attack of the enemy when he seeks to put you down. And to say, I will not fear because God is with me. God is with me and he promised he will never leave me, but he will carry me through. And can you see when God is handing, you know, sometimes you, you want your children to go in a certain direction and they just somewhat is blinded to that reality. And if only they would have gone in the path you were directing them, they would have been in a place of security where they could live a more fulfilled life. God wants you, my sisters, my brothers, to live a full life. Christ Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it in all its abundance. He didn't come to cause us to be conformed to a particular pattern, but that life may flow through us. Life may flow through us. Let me ask you a question. If you knew you only have one week left to live, how would you spend it? How would you spend it? Now Jesus, on the Sunday he was entered, he knew what was coming ahead of him. But did he run away? No, he came boldly and he stood up and he made the proclamation and it was no mistake. He did that to coincide with the celebration of Passover because there's a transition. And he came to proclaim the way forward that the end of one path had come in, when I say the end in that yes, you continue to remember but your salvation is not in remembering but your salvation is in living today the life that God has for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. The end of the sacrificial system that you have to bring lambs or whatever animal to offer sacrifice for your sins because the Lamb of God was laying down his life so you may live. Lay down his life so you may live. Isn't it interesting that though Jesus had been speaking to his disciples about his coming demise or his coming departure, still many did not believe it or accept it and they continued to live as though he was going to be with them forever. Are you living as though you're going to live forever and your health is going to be buoyant all through your life? Let me say to you this morning, we all will die. So what we have to do is to make preparation for our end. And let me say something even to you this morning. You don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know whether you will see tomorrow. But God does. And it is for us to put our life and our hand in he who knows everything. And so that is why Jesus cried when he looked and he saw what was going on. And he think, if only, if only you knew what would bring you peace. We look around our world and there is so much turmoil, even in our own homes, our communities, our cities. People are looking for purpose and meaning and without even realizing it and are moving in direction that are bringing chaos and destruction rather than peace and unity and reconciliation. If the disciples had truly believed what God, what Jesus was saying to them, I wonder how they would have responded. Because for them, when he entered in and finally allowed them to celebrate, he says, yeah, wow. They thought, yes, now he's going up there and he's going to throw out these Romans and he's going to establish something amazing. 
But that was, he had a bigger plan other than that. If you knew what would bring you peace. Last Sunday, I spoke on forgiveness. And I just touched on that topic. I wonder how many of you have actually taken that to heart and have really begun the process of dealing with the unforgiveness that's in your heart. Let me say to you this morning, if you're living in unforgiveness, you're not going to find peace. You will never find peace. And if you want to find peace, you must begin that process of forgiving those who have harmed or hurt you and receiving the forgiveness that comes from God so that you might live again. So when he says, if only you knew what would bring you peace, because he is our peace. Let me move on a bit, a bit further. The ministry of Jesus Christ proclaimed the provision that God had made for the forgiveness and reconciliation of all mankind. Look with me in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 to 18. Let me, let me think with you on this passage here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 to 18. Verse 14 says, For he, Jesus, himself is our peace. I wonder whether you've ever been a peacemaker. In your workplace, in your family, in your community, are you an agitator? Do you work for peace or do you agitate a group to cause friction? For he himself is our peace. How is that? He revealed to us the way that we must relate to God and to each other. And the preparedness to act out of a, in a selfless manner to bring about peace and harmony. Who has made the two groups one? What is the writer saying here? If you want to Jew, you're a Gentile. You're either in or you're out. And that was the belief. Unless you're a Jew, then you know, you're a Gentile. Stay out. You can become a Jew through a process. And there was this hierarchical structure where, you know, there was this feeling that we are truly God's people and the others are really at the mercy of God. But Paul writing to the church here in Ephesus made it clear that that division that separates humanity in, from a, on a religious ground and even on a gender ground, he says, God has made two groups one and has destroyed the barrier. Destroyed that barrier the dividing wall of hostility. God wants to destroy the barrier that is keeping you apart from your son, your daughter, your mother, your father. But you have to be prepared to allow him to give you the strength to do that. He said he destroyed that barrier in verse 15 by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulation. When he said setting aside, he dealt with all that was needed and he paid the price. He says the reason for him doing this was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two. One new humanity. One new humanity. God loves all the people of the world. God loves you. It doesn't matter where you have been, what you have done. God loves you with an everlasting love and he's reaching out to you. And the coming of Christ into our world is to create one new humanity. So that celebration, when Jesus cried, when he saw what was happening, he saw the division. He saw all that was going on. And he wanted to create one new humanity out of the two that's making peace. It's wonderful when two opposing parties are able to come together and to make peace. Making peace can be very costly, but the dividend is glorious and amazing. And he says, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross. The reconciliation. You see the symbol of the cross? The two outstretched arms to take hold and to bring together as one. He put to death in the cross their hostility. He paid the price for that. And his 
purpose was to offer peace to all mankind. I want to implore you to become a peacemaker. But before you can become a peacemaker, you must make peace with yourself and your God. And he will allow you to carry that message of hope. So all that Jesus came and did was to bring about reconciliation of man to their God. To bring peace and to create an environment where we can not only enjoy life, but enjoy it to the full and serve our God. And look at our world all these years later. Fighting and striving. Billions and billions of pounds are being spent on arms. And where there are people who are starving. And just imagine if just a, a fraction of the money that's been spent by our world would be given over to eradicating poverty. Can you imagine what our world would be? So many people are in, get involved in illicit things because they don't have enough. He came and he preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. In other words, those who didn't know anything about God and those who had not an understanding of God. He says, now, let there be peace. And here is the message of God's grace and his mercy. And he deals with you on the basis of his willingness to forgive you, pay the penalty, and to bring you together in one family. That was God's plan. John 3, 16 tells us, God so loved the world. God so loved the world. Love must always find expression in tangible forms. It's no good just saying, I love, I love, when there's nothing that is shown of your love. That he allowed his only son to come. And he said, whoever believes in him. Now, when he says whoever believes in him, it means whoever take the word of Jesus and act upon it. You're not saying, well, yes, I believe he was the son of God, but take it and apply it to your life will not perish, but have eternal life. It seems like just the other day that we were young people, without a care. And when you start looking at the television, you see, and you're saying, those people look so young. Realize that you're getting old. And this body will have to perish, but the true person that you are will live on forever. And Christ came to give you hope. And to fill you with purpose, he puts his spirit within you so you may live. But you have a choice. You have a choice. Will you receive the gift of God that Christ came and made available to all mankind? In verse 17, he says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God brings no condemnation. He knows everything about you. You don't need to tell him anything. All you need to say, Lord, forgive me and receive me and make me your child. That's why he came. That's why he came. And as I bring the service to a close this morning, in John chapter 1, verse 9 to 13, I mean, I, I, I make no apology for constantly reminding you of this verse. Because until it dawns upon you and you realize your responsibility to respond to it, you may still remain outside of the kingdom. Because it's all good and well. You say, that sounds nice and that's lovely and ain't God great. But you have to do something. And for those of you who are on the periphery of the church, and for those of you who feel as though you're part of the church, but if you have not committed your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're kidding yourself. And you, you, you will come and you say, well, I never knew you. And you thought he knew you and you knew him because you said, Lord, I did this for you. I spoke to you. And he said, depart from me. I never knew you. The way to knowing him is to actually accept the truth that he, he brings. Turn from your, your self-contained life or self-directed life and begin to follow him by allowing his word to transform you and to change you. That's what it means to follow Christ. It's not about coming to church every Sunday. It's about taking the word of God and applying it to your lives and allow it to change you. And when you're doing this, of course you'll be in the, wherever God's people are gathered. Of course you will be. The true light, he says, that gives light not to just the Jews or the Gentiles or to, you know, who, whoever, but who gives light to everyone was coming into the world. The light shines. Isn't it wonderful that, you know, the sun doesn't just shine in those who are good? But the light shines. It says, 
he was in the world. In other words, he was near, near. In other words, he made himself available. He spoke to so many. Some of them wanted to kill him beforehand. But he brings the truth and it hurts so much. He was in the world, he said. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Do you, are you recognizing God or are you so tied up in your, little, in your life, in what you have to do, that you don't even recognize the one that is blessing you? So, the point is, recognition and reception is two important key ideas that you need to take hold of. You cannot accept until you recognize. You cannot ask Christ into your life until you recognize that he is the life giver. As Luke writing in Acts says, there is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. Until you recognize that God sent him into the world to make a way for us, you cannot receive him into your life. He says, the world did not recognize him. And verse 11, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. He, ah, rejection, oh man. But isn't it amazing that God did not dwell upon that? But he came to give an opportunity and continues to give an opportunity. And today he's still giving the opportunity to all of mankind to receive him. Why? Because he's given you the choice. And you must exercise your choice. He came to that which was his own. In other words, those who knew about him, those who had read the prophecies, those who were expecting the Messiah to come. He came to those who was his very own. But his own did not receive him. And verse 12 says, Yet to all who did receive him, to hear the movement from his own, to all who did receive him, who will receive him. Because if you go back into Acts again, when, when Peter stood up and was speaking, and he says, you know, these, these people are not drunk. And he says, and when he says, what should we do? He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive you know, the gift of God and, and the Holy Spirit, you'll receive these things. And he says, it's not just for you, but all who would believe, all who are far off. So this morning, it is for you to believe that God has made provision for you. And don't just focus on the glitz and the glamour of, of going into Jerusalem, but on the meaning and the purpose. And if only you will recognize that and make a response. It says, yet to all who did receive, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. He gave the Holy Spirit that begins the process of transformation and making you into a child of God. God came to make you into a child of God. That celebration way back then was to inaugurate that period openly that Jesus Christ had come, God had spoken, and he's created a new and living way for all mankind to become a child of God. A child of God. A child of God. I conclude then with Revelation 3.20 which says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And you take note of that verse, John 1.30 says, Children born not of natural descent nor of human decision are a husband's will but born of God. Born of God. Revelation 3.20 says clearly here, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. What does this mean? You would have heard God speaking to you this morning to open your life. Open your life and welcome him into your life. Know that he loves you with an everlasting love. Recognize that if you have not said yes to him, you're outside of his will. It's not about being perfect. Don't allow the enemy to kid you to tell you you need to sort things out before you come. You'll never be able to sort those things out. Come as you are. And Jesus will help you to untangle your life and to build a solid foundation. He loves you just as you are. But he expects you when you come to allow his word, when he challenges you to change you. As we celebrate this period, let us go forth with the confidence that God is here with us calling us to follow him on that journey to eternal glory that begins with an acknowledgement that he is indeed the promised Messiah, the Son of God, that has come into the world to bring life to all who will receive him. 
May his word find a place in our hearts and give the courage we need to take the step that is necessary to begin a journey that will find its fulfillment in the presence of the Almighty and all those who love and know him. Amen. God of glory and God of grace, we thank you for this day. And we ask that as we, as we draw near to you, Lord, that you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, will draw near to us. We pray that as we search your word during this week, you will fill our minds and our hearts with the truth of your love and fire us to take the message out to those who are outside of the kingdom, that we will indeed be the message. We pray that you might help us to stand firmly on the ground, that you are with us, and when you are with us, then we are more than conquerors. And so, Lord, I just ask, bring healing to your people this morning, clarification of vision and purpose, so that together we may go forward to do great things for you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Bless the Lord. So we bring our service together to a close. We're going to sing this wonderful hymn, There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. It's never too late whilst you have breath. By the moment you leave this life, it will be too late for you. Don't put off what you can do today for another day. Come just as you are to the one who loves you so much that there is absolutely nothing he's not prepared to do for you. He has already done more than you can ask or think or even imagine. Father, thank you for sending your son. 
Lord Jesus, thank you for coming and showing us how to live. Live out the word, the living word, among each other and with our God. We thank you that you have made us brothers and sisters. And we pray that as we journey together, that love from your heart and the Father's heart will be in us and through us to all the people around us. We offer to you our praise and our thanksgiving and ask now that you would send us out with the knowledge that we are truly your children and that we have, a, have work to do and you have placed us where you have. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you and go with you. Bless the Lord. Remember, please join us this evening. I will be sending out the invitation for Zoom for us to look around the word as you entered into Jerusalem.